Welcome, everybody. Looks like we've got a few people gathered here to talk about search code today. Um, just a couple of things. There's a chat window on the right that you are welcome to type into, and I'll try and um, keep an eye on that so that I can respond to any comments. Um, might ask to, uh, if, you're, if you have a more in-depth question, I might ask you to turn off your mic, turn on your microphone and, and just ask it because we've got um, we've got uh, a couple of basic demos under our belts now, so I think this is going to be more of a q and I'm, I'm going to show off a few new features. I'm going to do a quick recap, and then um, we, can, uh, we can take questions and do some more in-depth use cases if people have them to talk about. Um, Josh, are we recording this? We are. Okay, awesome. Great. So, if you you want to send this to anybody, we should be up on the Civic CRM YouTube channel pretty soon, which is starting to get some more videos on it, which is great. Okay. So, I'm just going to go ahead and get started, and people who come in late can catch up on YouTube. So, just to give a quick recap, um, my name is Coleman Watts of the Civic CRM core team. Um, I'm the primary author of uh, SearchKit and API v4, which is what SearchKit is based off of. Um, and SearchKit is new in the past year or so to Civi CRM, um, still officially in beta, although more and more people are using it, which is great. Um, it is, it's, it's been in rapid development over the past year and has now, um, their development is slowing pace now in terms of like big new things, but there's still a lot of development going on in terms of fine tuning and getting everything, um, getting all the kinks worked out and making sure that it's meeting the most use cases it can meet. Um, so quick recap, SearchKit um, is a tool that lets you compose a search for just about anything in Civi CRM. Um, and it is based on API v4, which is um, the newest version of Civi Serum's API, which has some really powerful search tools built into it, um, including some advanced stuff like SQL joins and SQL filters. Um, and most of that is exposed to SearchKit, which, let, which lets you do some very advanced things. Um, and it's the admin interface is primarily aimed at power users, uh, people who understand what a database is, understand that the data is stored in different tables and that there are way that in order to get the data you want, you need to know uh, where to look for it. Um, but um, SearchKit lets you create other searches. Combined with Form Builder can let you create a search with fields that people can search on. Um, and so uh, everyday users can use those displays to find the things that they need quickly um, because you can tailor it to their exact needs. You, you can build as many searches and as many displays as you want. Um, and those displays could come with just one field, like type in the last name to find the person within this, you know, within this, the thing that the search is searching for. Or it could come up, or you could put a ton of fields in it and make something sort of similar to what um, is the current advanced search in Civi CRM um, with tons and tons of different options. And really, you can just configure it however you want for those, um, for the users that are going to be looking at it. Um, and you can also configure your missions. Um, the search will enforce. Um, so that's the, uh, that's the quick re recap. Um, and we can talk now about some of the new features in SearchKit. So I'm going to share my screen here so that I can do um, a little bit of demoing. Um, it's, I'm not going to go through um, all of the scenarios that I've gone through before. Again, you can just check out the Civi Stream YouTube channel um, for some, a couple of demos that I've already done of SearchKit and how you can use them to create search displays and embed them in, um, thing, in places like um, the contact summary screen, creating a new tab or a new block on the summary screen, or creating a new dashboard dashlet for users to use um, based on whatever search criteria and display you want to create. 
Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and present here just a sec. All right. All right. WCRM here on my test WordPress install. Um, if there's anything that is not working right, just let me know in the comments or in the uh, in the chat, and I'll I'll be paying attention to that stuff. Okay. So when you go to CiviCRM, uh, the search menu, search kit. Search kit, by the way, is an extension that is bundled with CiviCRM, so you don't need to download it separately, but you do need to turn it on. Um, so here in Administer um, System Settings Extensions, you just click on that, click on Search Kit, turn it on. Uh, and then you will get this menu item right here, which brings you here to this screen. Okay, so I want to show a couple of new things in Search Kit. All right, so one thing that you can now do um, that you could not do before, um, which was a much requested feature, was to find contacts within groups and within smart groups. Um, and so uh, typically when you are wanting to find contacts, and contacts is just one of the many, many things you can search for. Um, I don't know if you've seen this yet, but there's also a new um, better organization of these fields so that these are the primary things that you would typically want to search for, activities, contacts, contribution, events, participants, pledges, um, depending on what uh, components you have enabled in CiviCRM. And then uh, if that doesn't isn't the primary entity you're searching for, and remember the primary entity is the one that you want to be able to take actions on, um, and it's the one that you would be, uh, is the main thing that you're concerned about, you can also join on other things. but um, if that's not it, then you can, you know, here's like every API in CiviCRM that you might be wanting to search for. But typically, it's going to, you're going to start with one of these. Often, when you want to find things that are related, um, even if it's just in the search criteria and you don't want to display anything about them, you would do a join saying that you're wanting to search for contacts with something else like participant. Um, and sometimes you have to be careful. Organization isn't perfect. We still need to make it more clear that this is the actual participant join and this is something pretty obscure transferred to. A lot of organizations don't even use that. That's 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 those are the kinds of little like tweaks that we're making um, to try and make it better. So that's on the to-do list. Um, so when you're searching for participants, um, you then get to, you know, add that to the where. So, like, I want to find participants who, you know, are in a particular event or have a particular status, etc. cetera. Um, with groups and tags, it's a little bit different um, because smart groups are so complicated in the database and they are calculated on the fly. Um, you know, smart group is basically a saved search criteria, and you can, in fact, take search kit and save it as a smart group. And then you could take that smart group and search for it in search kit, and then you could save that as a smart group, and then you could set, I don't recommend going down that rabbit hole for performance reasons, but you could. Um, so for this, uh, for this field, there's actually one, it's actually in here. So we want to find contacts in the following groups. And we can pick regular groups or smart groups from this list. This is a demo site. I haven't created a smart group. Um, I could. Let's try it. So participants um, and let's find. So that should be, and uh, we also want it to be um, status. 
to find participants who attended the fall fundraiser dinner. I hope the sample data has some. Yes, it does. Okay, great. So we're going to take that and get that and save it as a smart group. That's about it. You can save it. Now we have a new smart group. Go back to search kit and just check this out, make sure it's working. If not, then we can fix any bug. That's the fun thing about these presentations. Sometimes I find bugs when I'm presenting. Um, I don't want to jinx it. Okay, so find groups is one of I wonder if I have to refresh. Um, so question, can I find members of a group who don't have a tag? Yes. Yes, you can. I'll show that in just a second. Yep, how about that? Hit refresh and there it is. Um, so I want to find contacts who are in this group, fundraiser people, and there it is. There is the save search criteria from the other search that I created. Um, and then I could build upon that if I wanted to. Um, so, for example, to answer the question from Catherine, um, let's say that we, we want to find contacts in this group fundraiser people who do not have the tag company, for example. And there's that. Um, so, yeah. And then you could tag them. So we could do select all with the action. Um, and we could add a tag to them. Maybe it was the tag that you were looking for. Um, add that tag. If we do that, then I think they're all going to disappear. Yep, they're all gone because they now don't meet the search criteria anymore. Um, but if we search for contacts in the group that do have that tag, there they are. Okay, so that's one of the new features in SearchKit, um, something that people have been wanting, it's the ability to search in groups, smart groups, um, and tags. And by the way, um, for those who are advanced users, thanks for the applause, Catherine. Um, for those who are advanced users, you know that groups can be nested within other groups. Um, so this kind of makes my head explode, but if you are searching for a group that is contained in another group, it will find those contacts too. So um, yeah, just, just play with it, you'll, you'll get it. Um, the, the contacts can be nested in other groups and the contacts in those nested groups also belong to the parent group and SearchKit will find those um, as you would as people who know about nesting groups would expect, it works as you would expect it to. Um, okay. Uh, one more calculated field um, that you may find useful, um, which I think, let's see, I'm trying to remember what it belongs to um, with, say, participant. Oh, right. Search that I already created here. Um, follow fundraiser participants. So we are searching for contacts with participants. And then participants, again, you have to know something about the schema of CiviCRM. Participants is a link between contacts and events. So let's go to the events. Um, again, the organization thing. Um, it's, it's bubbling up on the priority list because people want this um, uh, UI to be smooth as well as being able to do everything. It also needs to be smart enough to not do, let you do dumb things easily. So not the events that a contact has created, um, like an admin creates an event and there's a record of it. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the events that they participated in. That's kind of what we're going for here. So, right, 
obviously it's the fall fundraiser dinner. That's what this search is about. Um, but I think, yes, here it is. Um, so there's this other calculated field called is current, which is to say, um, and this is true of participants and relationships and other things that have a start and end date in CV Serum, um, but could also be disabled. So like with a relationship, you can, you can turn a relationship on and off. Like you can say, you know, this person is no longer an employee of this organization. That's a relationship type. You can also, the, the relationship can also just naturally expire because it has an end date. And so those are two different fields in CV Serum, which makes it a little bit tricky to work with. You have to compose a search. If you want to find people that are no longer an employee or are currently an employee of an organization, you would have to say, you know, and you can do this with search kit. It's just, it's just kind of a pain. You would have to say like, um, uh, you know, are they, uh, is the relation um, in the future um, and is the relationship active? Or you can just click this yes button and Civi Serum will do that calculation for you. So there's another handy thing in Search Kit now. Okay, so we talked about creating displays. Um, and let's go back to that for a minute because so you can create this display and you can create like a table um, for users to look at. Um, and there's this green button next to it with a lock on it that says enforce permissions. So now Civi Serum has an idea of what permissions people have. So if you log into Civi Serum as yourself, which you should do, then Civi Serum knows what role you have and what permissions you have. And if your organization has set up complicated access rules, it might say, well, you have access to this segment of context, but not this other segment. So SearchKit will enforce all of that naturally. Um, and it will tell you um, that it'll show you only results that you have access to see, even if there are um, thousands and thousands of results that technically meet the search criteria it will filter that down by the ones that meet the search criteria and you have access to. Um, if you're not a super admin, then you would not have access to every contact in the database, potentially. Well, what if you want to show a search display to people that don't have access? For example, you want to make a public listing of your, um, of your members, um, you know, we can talk about whether or not that's a good idea, but you might have that in your use case, like that you want to show on your public website to people who are not even logged in at all, you might want to show them some data, some you know, data that should be available to the public. Um, okay, you can do that. If you are a of the potential risks of giving other people the power to do this. So, I am a super admin in this WordPress site, so I can click on that button and I can say bypass permissions. And now I can make this display and just this display, not the whole search, but just this one, this table that I'm creating. Um, I can say anybody's going to be able to view this. Well, how do they view it? Okay, I think, I, I think my search criteria is now filtering out everything. But anyway, um, I just wanted to, to demonstrate this. So in order for them to, in order for this bypass permissioned search display to be shown on your website somewhere, you need to put it someplace. And the way to do that is to put it in, a, in an app form, um, also known as form builder. And that's also the way that you would add filters to it. So, um, Oh, okay. What? So let me take away some of this criteria that was causing no results to show. Because so I was just playing around with that. Okay, now we've got some results again. Um, and if we go back to our table display and preview it, we should get those same results. Yep. Okie doke. So I'm going to save that. So 
for some reason, we want to show this to, and it doesn't have to be for anonymous users. It can be, you can take this anytime you want to show something to somebody that they wouldn't normally have access to because they're not like a back-end civic user who has access to your contact database. But you want to show them something like, like may, say for this case, this is participants of an event. Say you wanted to show participants in the event a list of the other participants, but you don't want to show it to the entire world. You just want to show it to the people who are participants. So you could give them a special and then you can give them access to this page, but only them. How do you do that? Okay, let's go back to search kit. So we've, we've saved this, we're safe to leave here. Um, and this is the step that you might forget, so remember that. When, after we saved everything, then we left that screen and went back to the main search kit screen. And now we find the thing that we just created, which is the fall fundraiser participants display, and click over here on forms. There aren't any yet. Let's create one. This brings us over to form builder, and it has a little placeholder here. This is what the table, this is where the table is going to go, is what it's saying. Um, and Now remember that there was that red icon that we clicked on in the display when we were configuring it that disabled permission checks. So this is a, um, so we're sort of in the danger zone here because we're working with something that is open access if we allow people to see it. But in order for people to see it, this form has to allow people to see it. So here is where we configure permissions for the form. This is what's going to give people access to this um, unpermissioned display. So again, if we have participants who might want to see the list of other participants, we can check which particular permission they need to have to view this form. Now, why is that different? Because people with this permission that we pick um, might not have access to um, the contact database. They might not normally logged into CV any other you know random contact other than themselves. But clicking on this, um, we can give pick a permission for them. So I just wanted to demo that. Then we would then we pick placement. We can put it on its own page, which needs to start with the CVCRM URL. Um, like that. We can put it on its own page. There's also, since we're logged into a WordPress site here, I also wanted to make sure that people know that uh, Form Builder, which is what we're on right now, uh, Form Builder supports um, short codes for WordPress. Um, I know that short codes in WordPress are kind of going away in favor of blocks for, um, uh, but in, um, blocks for uh, Gutenberg, but Gutenberg's blocks still support short codes. And so you can still um, insert um, this search display in a place in WordPress. You can also, for any CMS, WordPress or Drupal or Joomla, you can just create a page for it and CiviCRM will show that page in the place where CiviCRM pages are normally shown. Um, Right, Kevin, short codes still exist. Um, they just aren't very easy to discover. There is a uh, plugin for WordPress. I forget the name of it. It's probably called um, CiviCRM short codes or something like that, that lets you um, more easily find, type the right code um, for Gutenberg. It's not very complicated. Um, I think, you know, the code for AFORMS is just a form and then the name of the form, um, which in this case would be participant form display. But uh, you know, it helps to have a selector. So I think that
Okay. So, um, and then just a, a quick recap of how this works. We created our, our display. We set up the search criteria for it. We configured permissions for it. Now we're over on Form Builder, and Form Builder lets us add some additional filters. So like, um, so like display name, for instance, we can like stick that filter at the top of the form and people can then type into this box and it'll filter down the results that they're seeing in case it's a big search. Or like I was saying, if you wanna create something similar to a custom search or advanced search for particular users to use, you can expose whatever, um, whatever fields you want. Um, for them to search on and they can interact with those fields whether it's typing into it or whether it's a you know a drop down select or whatever kind of field it might be um, and you can create a whole search form for them you know or you can just create the display it's it's totally up to you how you want to do that any questions about creating forms in um, creating search forms in, uh, in search kit and form builder. If not, then I'll go back and show a few more new features that we've got. Multiple forms on a page. Um, so the question was, is there ability to display multiple search kit displays on a page? In theory, yes. And there's a few places where you can see it in action, like on the dashboard, you can put as many search kit displays as you want on there as individual dashboard dashlets. That's on like the home screen of CiviCRM. Or, um, you know, on the contact summary page, you can embed as many search kit Easy way to do it right now? Not really, um, except that if I was to save this, um, you know, save this form, uh, you could create a new form, like from scratch, uh, a new form builder form, and embed this form into it and another form into it and however many others you want just using their um, using their directive name. Uh, you need to know a little bit about the way that the form markup works. Um, like, this is how you embed something in a form, is just using the directive name. So this, in this case, it's the search display table that's being stuck into this form. So we could create a new blank form, and every app form, including this one, creates a, um, you know, creates a little tag like this that you can use to stick that form into something else. So you can stick a form into a form, um, and that and uh, Form Builder actually does that a lot. Um, you know, if you're just creating a form for creating a new contact, you can stick another little, you know, form within it. Like the the email fields is a little sub form, um, and there's a there's a GUI for that. There isn't a GUI for this yet, but it would be nice to add that. Um, I was think I've been thinking about that. How to, how to create it. Basically, once you create these, um, these search forms, you then want to like basically put them into a bigger layout. Not even exactly a form, but just a, a layout. And we can do that with this, with this tool. Uh, just don't quite have the GUI worked out for it yet, because it, it really would be able to just drag in anything. Um, so you can do that just by editing the markup and doing it yourself. But um, at some point, it would be nice to to create a GUI to to let you compose those big those big layouts that might contain anything you want. Okay, so John is saying his current use case is display totals for a search kit search. Um, right. Okay, that makes sense. There is, by the way, a way to see the like total number of rows in the pager, but you're probably talking more about like calculated sums and things like that. Which brings me to the next thing I wanted to show off. So let's go back to SearchKit.
Okay, okay. Let's see if we can pull up a date field that Okay, so this is sample data, so the dates don't really contain any times. Um, if this was a live event, then the, the date and time would you know, reflect the actual date and time that the person registered for the event. But um, say that your users, you know, the users of your form really only care about the date, or they really only care about the time. So I just wanted to show you another new feature in SearchKit, which is this little unobtrusive thing called field transformations, where we've got these four fields that we've got as the table headers. And what if we want to transform them? So date, like we could say date only for the register date. Um, we could say event title in all caps for some reason. I don't know, maybe there's a use for that out there somewhere. So I just wanted to show you that. It's, it's kind of cool to play with. Um, these are all uh, SQL functions that it's invoking. So, um, so that's kind of cool. Um, this is something that, this is something that existed sort of in previous versions of SearchKit, which is that when you were doing a, a group by in your search, um, it would it would say that you had to do a field transformation for like combining the the fields. Um, so if you're doing searching for contacts and also joining on their email addresses, contact might have more than one. Um, so you you group by contact ID and then you need to then you've got multiple email addresses in each um, for each contact. And so it would it would say, well, how do you want to group them? Do you want to do you want to group them with um, you know just list them all or do you want to just pick the first one or pick the last or um, so that still exists in the same spot but now you can do it even when you're not grouping by you can pick another SQL filter uh, so I wanted to show that off it's um, it's a cool thing to play with and over on the last new feature I wanted to show off is um, well a couple of things so displays have gotten better um, in addition to enabling actions, we can also now enable a search button. Um, can have some text um, and also a um, we can show the result count, which I was just mentioning to John in the pager. We can let the user adjust the pager size if we want them to be able to. Um, so we could take this down to. Like 10 and now we've got you know two pages all two pages of our sample data um, and that might have been a bug I'm gonna put a bookmark in that the other thing that I want to show you is that when you're um, creating links of the contact for, for instance to view them Right, like that. So you can create that link, um, and when it's, or you can create the link to view, edit, or delete them, or you can just create it for whatever you want. Um, so if you've got your own custom action that you've made, um, or you want to be able to, you know, do something else like the add tag tag action that that we saw earlier, and you want to just be able to click on them and do that, you can. Um, and you probably need some data in this link, like the contact ID. So this, uh, this token selector is now more advanced than it used to be. Uh, it used to be just it would show you the fields that are selected as columns in the search. Um, now it will let you pick absolutely anything. Um, so you can go to town with constructing your own custom links. Um, same thing for the rewrite field. Um, so this is the display name column, but what if we wanted to just um, add any other field to it? Um, you can do that now. Um, uh, 
don't know if any of them have a job title. Maybe. Oh, nope. Oh, we should fix that. It shouldn't just say null. Uh, good. A field that we actually have in the sample data. Um, gender, maybe? Birth date? I don't know. Let's see. Lots of nulls. I think we should I think we should just show an empty string instead of null. But anyway, you get the idea. You can um Um, and that's really useful for, like I said, constructing custom links, custom actions. I think I've shown this off before, but um, you can, so here's the other, when you add a column but you haven't added it to the display, it's going to let you add it in yourself later in this little unobtrusive button. You can also add some, some links and buttons or a menu to your, uh, like this. That looks a little bit silly, but you can style it differently. You can add a menu for viewing, editing, or deleting each contact, or add whatever other custom links you want. You can add another, um, yeah, like you can view the event. Again, we're, we're uh, making it bigger than our screen, but you get the idea. Okay, so. Lots of cool new features. You can really go to town if you're an advanced user and construct a search that looks and does the exact things you want it to do. Um, I kind of like just not having any text in this thing. Going. Showing it like that. Yeah, that's nicer. I don't know why this style makes those black. It's it's our bootstrap theme. So depending on how your website theme is styled, it will be different for you. But this is just like the ugliness of a stock um, demo site. Okay, so those are the things I wanted to demo. I'm happy to take more questions if people want to ask more about SearchKit. Um, anything, any other use cases that you didn't see or you're not sure if they're possible, I can, I can. Yeah, that's fine. I think we're I think we're gonna squeak by under the limit, Josh. Okay, so the question was, can you search for contacts who have a single tag and no other tags? Hmm. Sounds like a challenge. Let's see. Um, let's make a new search. Okay. So you can, ah. So we could, let's see. Um, you can search for contacts without tags right but we want to we want this to be and you might be adding new tags in the future so we don't want to just hard code them into this search so let's think about this um, where tag name is not equal to ooh maybe that's going to work okay we've got a double negative here which might actually do the trick. Um, so we want, we want to find contacts who don't have a tag that's not the tag we want. <laughs> that might do it. Um, hopefully this gives you a hint in the right direction. You can play around with the different things that you can do here. So when you, when you do a join, you can say whether you want to um, 
Yeah, good, good thought, John. So you can also add having um, a um, that's one of those field transformations here. Um, so that could be useful too. Hopefully that gets you moving in the right direction. Okay, here's another question from Andrew. Currently it's possible to send search results directly to a mailing. Let's see. So when you say send search results to a mailing, are you talking about like the report automatic uh, emails that go out? Like you can have schedule a automatic a report to be automatically emailed to people? That was a question for you, Andrew, that you can unmute if that's easier. Um, I see what you're talking about. Yes. Right. right. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Let me think about that. So when behind the scenes, if I recall this correctly, when you do that from advanced search, it creates a hidden smart group and it has the mailing go out, be sent based on that hidden smart group. So that basically, it does the same thing under the hood, but it saves a step from making the search, creating a group, and then sending the mailing from that group. So that you can do with SearchKit right now, but that like extra middle step removed or like automatically creating the group and then sending the mailing, that SearchKit doesn't do. That would be nice, I agree. Um, feature um, to get it to do that. SearchKit can create the groups easily enough, so it's really just about having the convenience code in there to create the group and then take you right to the mailing screen. Um, sounds like some people here are already using SearchKit, which is awesome. Um, does anybody have a a uh, a story of, of actually, like a success story of using it for something that's actually in production now or, or getting getting ready for production? Not yet. John, I thought you were thought you were getting something ready using search kit. Uh, several things, but every time I try, I hit a bug, so we'll see. Oh, no. Okay, well, we'll keep the bug reports coming. We're, like I said, that's sort of the phase of development we're in right now is trying to get everything working right. Great. Good. Good. Well, we are, um, you know, the uh, ah, proximity search. So there is an open issue for that. Um, I think basically a bit of developer time thrown at it. Um, would be useful. When that issue was opened, I'm not sure if I can find it right this second, but when that issue was opened, um, I hadn't done all of the legwork of creating the mechanism for adding a calculated field. Like in the beginning, I showed you the calculated fields for groups and tags and is current. Now that that 
infrastructure exists in API 4 and it's relatively easy to add a calculated field that just like you know a field that just writes its own SQL or you know it's not just it's not just referencing a column in the database but it can just write some arbitrary SQL um, that exists now so I think it would be pretty darn easy to add um, a proximity field because um, it's just a it's just a calculated field that needs to write a little bit of SQL by itself you know the the radius um, calculation. So if anybody wants to fund a, a few hours of developer time for the core team to add it, or if anyone wants to have, have a crack at adding it themselves, um, let me see if I can find uh, Let's see. Proximity search. Here it is. Um, hmm. No, I, I'm not even sure if it has its own issue. We can open a new one for it. But yeah, Andrew, if you take a look at the way that we implemented the calculated fields for um, for groups and tags and is current, it basically you just um, you add a um, and there's a there's just a listener you add for that, and you can see how other fields are get added, and then in the field definition you just give the name of a callback function. And then in that callback function, you supply whatever SQL you want. And you could probably just copy the SQL that's already being used in core for, for calculating that radius or some, you know, some SQL on Stack Exchange that, that does that thing. I was asked that question recently. Um, I, Eileen was interested in that too. And so John's posted, is it possible to accept URL arguments um, for the form builder search display to pre-fill the search arguments? Um, there was something related to that that I meant to show off in this presentation, but I'll just say um, it's now possible to add default values to fields in form builder. That, that's been a missing feature for a long time. Um, that is pretty much exists in every form builder on the internet that, that you can specify a default value for a field. So that now exists. But in terms of taking URL arguments, technically, yes, form builder can do it. Um, there isn't a UI for it right now. So again, if anybody wants to kick in a couple of hours of, of core team funding, I think we could um, whip up an, a UI for accepting those URL arguments. And short of that, I can show you, John, how to just insert the little bit of HTML into the F form that will accept those URL arguments and pass them on to the uh, search kit um, uh, display. It, like I said, it's it's um, it's most of the way there in terms of like it technically works. It just isn't exposed to the the form builder UI right now. Sounds like you've been hitting it pretty hard, John, and I appreciate the, the bug reports and, uh, and stuff and just keep them coming. And if there's anything that, uh, if there's any bug reports that you posted a while ago that have been forgotten, you can re-ping me about them and we can take another look. And this stuff keeps evolving so quickly. Some of the stuff that was hard to solve a few months ago, like, like the proximity search we were just talking about, is now pretty easy to solve. Any other questions before we post this up to YouTube for the world to see? All right, everybody. Well, I'm glad we did this. I'm glad we got to talk about SearchKit again. Um, 
I've been knee deep in it for um, better part of a year now and really glad, really happy with the way that it's shaping up and glad for people to keep on um, letting me know about issues or ways to improve it. Um, we really do appreciate all of the organizations that have kicked in some funding. Um, there's been a lot of um, funders for specific features. Um, we've got a few in the works now. Um, we've got um, some funding now for a new feature, which um, I'm trying to remember what that new feature was that we're adding. Oh, uh, an export feature. So we just we just got a little bit of funding from Wikipedia um, for adding a feature where you can just quickly grab the exact results of the search and export them as opposed to having to go through the export wizard. Um, now you can just like basically save a search display um, as a um, as a Excel um, spreadsheet. So we'll have that probably in the next. with as well. All right. Thanks, everybody. See you next time.